19th Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you, George. And today is a very special day because we have Active Church, our annual meeting, which means that we have as our guest, our district superintendent, Reverend Ray Perez, right here. Give him a hand. At all this day, we always begin worship by singing together and then we pray together. Many of you shared prayer requests with me during the week, and some of you wrote them down on the clipboards as you came into the room so we can make a prayer from this group of people. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And then after we're centered like that, we will enter into the Word. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord God, it is a, such a gift to be able to be here in this place this morning. God, it means that we have the time in our schedules, that we have our health, that we had an invitation from a friend, that we have the gift of faith, brand new or years long. God, we thank you for all that you provided so that we could be here this morning. God, as we come here today, we want to come bringing our whole selves to you we want to be honest before you. We want you to examine us, God, to look for places in our life where we need transformation or healing or change. And allow us to be receptive to your Holy Spirit as it does its work, so that when we leave this place, God, that we can feel stronger and empowered and equipped and bold to go out to the world sharing your love as disciples of Jesus. God, I thank you for each person that you brought here today, and I lift to you first the prayers that Remain unspoken or unshared with others, but those prayer requests that you know so well because they rest in our hearts. God, please hear the unspoken prayer requests this morning. God, we pray for those for whom we're concerned. We ask that you would continue to be with Sarah LaMonica and pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we thank the Lord for Facebook, who let me know that this is Reverend Renee's, one of his very favorite songs. <laughs> Jesus. 
lesson with Sam and maybe Miss Heather as well. So that's going to be awesome. And today after church, you are welcome to stay for Youth Group Junior. Uh, Ms. Bonnie is going to be running Youth Group Junior. And if you brought your lunchbox, good. And if you didn't, guess what? We have lunch for you. So you can still eat lunch and stay for Youth Group Junior. Wait, is it that meeting where like, you set up the long tables? Long tables. And there's hot dogs and stew and that stuff. Uh, sandwiches. Yes, thank you for checking on that, Lauren. I appreciate that. OK, <laughs> let's, let's, there'll be plenty of food. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you provided plenty of food. Thank you that you provide for farmers, and thank you that you provide for the most vulnerable among us. Please bless these children. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is because it's important for all of us to be reading from our Bibles every week. So this is your one shot, if you didn't do it yet, uh, to read from the Bible together. Let's read Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves is not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Our scripture lesson this day comes from the book of Ruth, and I didn't before, are you going to incorporate that into your sermon, or, or would you like to read it now? Read it now. Okay. All right. From Ruth chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, and 14 to 20. The overseer replied, She is the Moabite who came back from the Moab, from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning until now, except for a short rest in the shelter. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some of the stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to a, a, about an ephah. She carried it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Here is the reading of the word. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Rachel. I feel very special today. I appreciate it. My favorite song, you know that song is the first song that I memorized yeah. uh, when I started going to church. Uh, and this is a long time ago. Anyway, but so glad to be here with you. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for your leadership, your excellence in leadership, and your pastoral care as well. Uh, I bring you greetings also on behalf of our bishop, Bishop David as well. You know, um, uh, I know you didn't see him there, but he was also gleaning potatoes there. And uh, he had this vision of us going up to Maine to get on a van, right? All of us get on a van and drive eight hours up to Prescott, Maine. That's exactly what we did. Uh, we spent a couple of days up in Maine, uh, not only gleaning potatoes, we also gleaned uh, broccoli as well. I'm just grateful to be here uh, this morning. 
You know, um, uh, Pastor Rachel asked me about, maybe this would be a good uh, 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 thing to talk about, gleaning, because th there's a lot of stuff that we as a church um, can, can glean from that. <laughs> can get from that passage about, you know, how do we help those who are in need. And as I was thinking about this, uh, what I would say, I think God gave me a little more uh, insight into this passage, which I want to share with you this morning. I don't know if you have uh, heard uh, people say to you, you know, that God doesn't care about your past. That all that God cares uh, is about your present and your future. And, and so I've heard that many times. Any of you have heard that before? Right? And so, you know, I, I thought about that and I said, you know, I, I'm not so sure that's true, at least for me. I think that God cares about every part of us where there's a present, a future, and a past as well. And not to judge us, but to redeem us. Because I believe that God always has a way to redeem our past. No matter how ugly our past is, or how beautiful our past has been, or the mistakes that we have made in our past, God, God has a way of redeeming the things that are in our past. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Will you join me in prayer this morning? I give you thanks to God for just the opportunity that you give us to be present this morning. I know that all of us, each and every one of us, have, have choices about what we ought to do on Sunday morning. Do we go to church? You know, what do we do? There are so many cho choices that are offered to us, but we are grateful to you, God, because your Holy Spirit just prompts us to come and worship you. I give you thanks to God because I know that your Holy Spirit is working in every life uh, this morning. And I pray, Lord, that uh, the things that I will say to you be acceptable to you. Lord, that as we meditate on your word, God, that our thoughts and our words uh, may bring praise and glory to you and growth in your community, in this community of faith. Uh, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let me see. I'm, I'm going to need to borrow this here for a little bit. You know, there are many, there are many uh, passages in Scripture. If you look, there are many passages that talk about gleaning. And one of the passages that you see, of course, begins and starts all the way in Leviticus. And one of the passages that's very familiar is Leviticus chapter 19, verses 9 through 10. And I'm just going to read that to you. And if you want to open your Bibles, you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, but that passage basically uh, says this. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. And then verse 10 says, leave them for the poor and the foreigner. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. And that's basically where we get that passage in. The, and that's why it's so important uh, for us because uh, we as a church are called, right, to provide for the poor and the foreigner and those who are in need particularly. So gleaning, uh, as Pastor Rachel explained earlier, gleaning is basically not only cleaning, right, but it's picking up after the leftovers the harvesters left. But I would say to you also that gleaning is also God's way of redeeming those who are in need. Gleaning is also God's way of redeeming those who are in need. You know, we, as you saw the pictures, we gleaned about 20, 50 pound bags of potatoes. Now you didn't see the broccoli because we left the broccoli uh, in the in many places in Northern Maine. Uh, the potatoes, half of the potatoes we left in Northern Maine, and then the other half we brought them and we distributed them in different uh, food banks, uh, depending where we were, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts. But uh, I'm going to tell you, this, is, this was, of course, my first experience of gleaning, and after an hour of bending over and picking up potatoes, it takes a little bit of a toll in your back, right? So you, you're, you're there, right? Uh, but, uh, but one of the things I think that I found really uh, inspiring and 
was just a thought in my head as, as we were picking up the potatoes, um, it, particularly when it was time to go, because we had a schedule and they were going to take us to different places. I saw the fields just filled with potatoes that they hadn't picked up, that they hadn't, hadn't harvested. And, and uh, you know, like a little bit, you know, they said, you know, we got to go soon. And so I just got on my knees. I got to grab a few bags. I got on my knees and started filling up all the bags. And I say, you know, it's going to be hard for me to leave all these potatoes knowing that there are people who could use these potatoes, right? And I, and I don't know, but I mean, that's just uh, what I started thinking about. And I said, you know, I can't leave. And I think everybody started thinking about it. And we started filling more bags probably towards the end than at the beginning. At the beginning, we were just grabbing little potatoes. And, and then at the end, we were finding the big potatoes that uh, we hadn't seen. And, and we were really uh, wanted to stay longer, but the people who were helping us, taking us places, wanted to take us to other fields uh, to glean as well. So, um, you know, this is basically the context of the story of Ruth this morning. Uh, Ruth and Naomi, I should say. You know, the story, but of course the story begins much earlier, and I, I just want to invite you, if you want to open your Bibles to Ruth, Chapter one. I'm not. We're not going to read everything, but just for reference, I think it's important for us to look at. It. You know the, the story of, of Ruth and, and her husband Elimelech. Excuse me, Naomi and her husband Elimelech begins uh, here in chapter in chapter one. And basically, the story says that there was a famine in Bethlehem, and because there was a famine, there was nothing to eat. Elimelech and Naomi took their two sons and fled from that land to find food to the land of Moab. Now let me just pause here for a moment because I think it is important for us to think about you know, why they flee their homeland. And, and so, you know, as I read it, I realized the people who flee their countries, they don't flee out of disobedience or because they want to be unlawful or because they want to be criminals. They flee their countries because there's a need, there's a necessity in them. And that's exactly what happened to them. To Elizabeth and Naomi, they left Bethlehem, you know, the comfort of their home where they had been, where they had grown up and their family was there because there was a need in their family. So to that extent, I think that in a way God was directing Elizabeth and Naomi to leave their home country and find provision for their family, for their two sons. I mean, think about it. You know, God gives us certain responsibilities as parents, right, to provide for our families. So in a way, God is saying to eliminate and Naomi, of course, doesn't say it in the scripture, but it's saying, you know, you need to find provision. And, and if you really think about it, they're not in the scripture, they're not the only ones who flee their country or flee their homeland in order to provide or because God was leading them for some other purpose. I mean, you can find Moses, right, who did that, right? I mean, even if you think about the New Testament, Mary and Joseph fleed the homeland because they will be persecuted. There was a need that they needed to go somewhere else. And if you also think about it, even during the times of Jesus, many other Christians, the first Christians, Flee Jerusalem because they will be persecuted. So people do not flee their homeland because you know they just want to be unlawful or because they want to be disobedient to God. They do it because they have a need, because they have no other choice. So this is where Elimelech and Naomi find themselves, and they find themselves in this country of Moab. Now in order for you to know where Moab is, you can go back to Genesis. Genesis tells us the story of Moab, and uh, uh, it, it basically in Genesis, and I think the story begins with Lot. You know, who, who knows who Lot is? Not the parking lot. Raise your hands. No shame or no way who Lot is. All right, so those of you who do know who Lot is, Lot was Abraham's. How? Who knows who Abraham is? All right. So, Lot was Abraham's nephew. And he had to flee Sodom and Gomorrah in order to uh, be saved, right? So Lot 
uh, fleas and you know they get separated from Abraham and at one point in Genesis Lot uh, of course Lot's uh, wife turns into this pillar of salt right so now Lot only is left with his two daughters and they end up leaving, excuse me, living in this cave. And one night, when, when they are there, uh, the two daughters, the younger and the older, said, uh, said to one of the, said to the other, you know, there's only our dad and us. How are we going to provide, you know, more family? Uh, so they decide basically to get their dad drunk. And they have close are there kids here? Just close your eyes. <laughs> you know where I'm going, I'm not even gonna say it. So you know uh, Can I so just this, interrupt and say yeah. in our family we talk about the rated R Bible. That's the rated R Bible. Yeah, that's the rated R Bible. Okay. So this this is exactly what happened in, in, in this part and, and so the the son of the oldest daughter, uh, his name is Moab. And that's where the Moabites come from, right? So this is this is the stories that you know we read in the scripture. Uh, but uh, but anyway, they you know Limelech and his family, you know, and their two sons. It doesn't at the beginning of the story it doesn't give us a lot more information about the timeline exactly, about when things happened exactly. It just says that they were there. And uh, their sons grew up and they took two wives for them. One was Orpa and the other one was Ruth. And in, in somewhere there, Elimelech died. And then, uh, 10 years later, their sons died. So here are three women uh, who are left to fend, fend for themselves. And Naomi, who is the matriarch of the family, says, I'm going home. I gotta go home. There's nothing for me here. And goes to the daughters-in-law and says, you girls, you ought to go home too, to back to your parents' house. Because even if I was to have two more kids, would you wait until they're all grown up in order to marry them? And say, no. You know, go. You know, start a new family somewhere else. And, Orpah, of course, says, yes, I'll do that. But Ruth says, uh, I'm not going to marry God be a judge that will never leave your side. And so Ruth decides to go with her, and this is basically the journey that they take. And, uh, you know, they get to back to Bethlehem, and, and, you know, if you read there, it says that they were the stir of the town. Everybody started talking about Ruth. And Naomi, you know, is that Naomi? You know, they, she's by herself. And I'm sure that people are wondering, where's the limit? Like, where are the two sons that they had? And Naomi said, it doesn't say to whom, but she said, don't call me Naomi. Naomi means pleasant. Call me Mara. Because the Almighty, the Almighty's hand is against me. And Mahmar means bitter. You know, I was thinking, this whole situation, I said to myself, you know, uh, it is interesting how when we focus on our own situations, right, you know, too much debt and dead of jobs and no money and maybe no car, and when we begin to focus on, on the things, right, that are, uh, for us are so important, we can become bitter and depressed. And we don't find a way out of our situation, right? We don't see how God can help us in that situation. And there, in, in, in that moment, I think, uh, of course, this is Naomi's perspective that God's hand was, was against her, but I think she was just focusing on, on what she was seeing before her. And, and sometimes, I think that as, as people who do not see what God is doing for us, that we do not see yet. So in the midst of all that, uh, Ruth goes out and goes gleaning, and she finds favor in the eyes of Boaz, right, who was the owner of the land, and finds favor, and God provides not only for Ruth, but also provides for Naomi as well. 
you know, when we focus on the things that are before us, on our problems, on our situations, again, it's so easy to become better. But when we are able to trust in God, then we realize that we can believe that God can not only redeem our past, but can redeem our present and our future. God can make out of whatever ugly that we have in our lives, God can make it better. And I think that's exactly what God did with the story of Naomi and Ruth. Here, someone who's bitter, or someone who was, who had no one, two women who had no one, and God provided for them at that moment. Now, many of us come to God with a lot of stuff in our hands. It's like a, a big bag of stuff that we come to God, and we don't even know, uh, you know, all the, the good, bad, and the ugly stuff, right? That nobody wants, no, nobody knows about. Only we know about. It. You know, in the outside, people see us happy and smiling, and people see all the good stuff that we can contribute, but deep inside, there's something inside that we say, you know what, if people knew this about me, maybe they wouldn't like me. If people knew the things I have done, maybe I wouldn't be in to the church. But, but that's not how God sees us, right? Because God doesn't just see us to judge us, He, God sees us to redeem us to take away all that stuff. Or, or maybe, in another way, I could say, to give us back the good things that the sin and the brokenness of life took away from us. And that's, that's what redemption is, right? For God to give us back the things that our sins and our brokenness took away from us. So this is exactly what, what God did for Naomi and Ruth. God gave them back. You know, Naomi wasn't bitter anymore. She became someone who was happy. And then later on in, in the reading, which I'm not going to go into, you know, you can see the, the change in her heart in how God did this. And, and again, you know, for Ruth, I think that not only God redeemed her present and her future, because if you don't know, Ruth, was the great grandmother of King David. And David was the ancestor of Jesus as well. So here is this person who came out of a Moabite, of, out of an incest relationship, right? If you may say that. And God not only redeemed her past, but also provided for her future. And so sometimes when we look at our lives and say, you know what? We look at us and say, you know, what is God going to do with me? I'm just this little person. But when we trust God, right, when we say, God, you know what? I don't know what, you, what you're going to do with me. I'm a screw up. You know, just talking about screwing up. We all screwed up, right? Some, somewhere along the way. And, you know, my son, uh, the middle one, uh, not that I'm calling him screw up, but he tells me that he's a screw up. <laughs> he tells me, you know, Dad, I'm such a screw up, he said to me. Um, and uh, let me just share something that uh, is it's very personal to us. No one out of the family knows this, and this is the first time we're going to hear this. So just delete it from that because from whatever you edited the video. But you know, my son, um, uh, about two years ago, he joined the Air Force for a while after he graduated high school. Well, uh, he called us um, a few months ago. It took me a little moment, right, to just kind of process, because I make the process thought, thoughts, and I said, son, you know, uh, first, I don't think you're screwed. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. Uh, you know, God does have a plan for you. God will do something out of, out, of, out of your mess. God will do something that maybe you don't know, you can't see it now, but God will do something. Just, just hang in there. So, you know, I think that's the kind of things that God can do in the same way that God has done it in the past and God will continue to do. Uh, you know, I think that's, that's, that's what God do, does, right? You know, when we talk about gleaning, let me just talk about it. With this, I finished. You know, God, in a way, I see gleaning not only God's way of providing for the needy, but gleaning, and spiritually speaking, 
gleaning is God's way of picking up after us. Picking up all our mess and all the stuff that is behind us. And making us whole new people. That's, that is the story, you know, because through gleaning, right, God uh, finds a way to redeem our stories, whatever the stories are. Amen. Let's pray. I know there is something very important coming up to this. Uh, let's pray. I give you thanks to God for your presence in our lives and pray over that. Uh, you continue, Lord, to work in us, to assure us that whatever mistakes you have made in the past, whatever has happened to us, God, you have a way of redeeming us. That you do not forsake us, you do not abandon us, you are always present, making something new out of our mess. So I pray, Lord, that we may live lives that reflect not only uh, your grace to us, but also the good, your grace towards other people. Uh, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Renee. That is really good stuff. I needed that. Thank you. Well, it is a happy day because we have some new members joining the church today. Uh, Chuck and Danielle Helm and their family. Scott and Savannah and Logan. Do you all want to come forward? <coughs> this family is joining us by transfer of membership. From the Two Spirit United Methodist Church, and first, want to hear a little bit from whoever likes the microphone. That may be really risky, actually. Uh, Danielle, yeah. we're gonna go <laughs> uh, about how you came to find all the state, and uh, we'll make sure that we have all the kids straight too, in case you haven't met the person yet. Hello. Hello. So, um, we first uh, came through the church. The uh, kids were attending the youth here, and that was a great opportunity for everyone. And then over the past year, a little over a year, we've been uh, joining with the dinner church, and that seems to be a great place for our family and fellowship, and it's just a wonderful time uh, where we can be ourselves and learn about God. I like to say, oh, I'm Logan. I like so uh, I like this church a lot because I have lots of new friends and that's what I'm okay. I'm the same way, I'm Savannah. I have a lot of friends here, so I like this church a lot. And so much fun to have around. And thank you for plugging Dinner Church too. There's going to be Dinner Church tonight at Fisher's House, our house at 6 o'clock. It's a great time to get together and eat and talk about faith and sing a little bit. Wonderful. So we are thrilled that you are coming. I also want to mention that Danielle is a candidate for ministry. She's a candidate for deacon. Uh, we have two uh, orders of our ministry, the Methodist Church and the Elder. Uh, but deacons work through the bridge between the church and the world. And so we are also in prayer and excited for your process as you go through that. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, now see, you guys will answer these questions, you three children, on your own when you do confirmation, so these are just for the adults right now, okay, these are questions, but you can listen to them and know that you're going to do them soon. Okay, so check in there now. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your own sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? in whatever forms they present themselves. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, 
which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. All right. And for all of us, do you as Christ's body of the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Chuck and Danielle and the children now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust in God and they become faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And now we're going to join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the Old and New Testaments. This is the Christian faith that is professed by every church, Catholic, Protestant, all churches. We all agree on this. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Uh, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And again, Chuck and Danielle baptized. Years ago, members of the United Methodist Church recently, and not just transferring, so we just received you then into this local congregation. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Will you please welcome them? All right. It is now time for our offering. Let us pray. Lord God, you've given us so much. Your gifts to us are incredible. God, thank you for working in our lives, both our lives in the present, and taking our past and redeeming it, even using our past, God, uh, to redeem it and transform our understanding <coughs> so that it can be brought as part of the glory that our lives can be in Jesus Christ. God, please accept this offering as our way of saying thank you for what you have done, bless it, and multiply it to your service in the world. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
do with today right after church. There is Youth Group Junior uh, after church. If your kids brought their lunch, is good. And if not, there's going to be lunch stuff put out here uh, for the annual meeting. So have the kids run through there and grab a snack. Um, Youth Group Junior will be in classroom one. Uh, we will be uh, immediately after this worship service uh, recognizing the September birthdays. Maybe we'll do that right now. Does anybody have a birthday in September? If you have a birthday in September, stand on up. There's some, there's some. Well, one, two, three, just three? That's it, a four. Yeah, all right. That's a lot of cake for four people. Let's say happy birthday. It is Ashton, Wesley, D, and Daniel. And Anissa. And Anissa. So we'll say, again, this month, all y'all. We'll do all y'all. Okay, ready? <laughs> somebody you do not know. Uh, talk to your friend in a minute, but this is your chance to go and say, hi, my name is Rachel. I forgot your name. Okay? You can do that. There's no shame. For those first two minutes, go introduce yourself to somebody you don't know and then get cake. We will set up lunch. The annual meeting will be in this space, hopefully starting just at about noon, noon time. Okay? We should be able to have lunch by then. On your way out the door, you will pass by sign-up sheets. The kids in the back, say sign up sheets. Sign up sheets. Sign up sheets. Pass by those sign up sheets and put your name on them. Coffee hour, reading the Bible, lighting the candles, or greeting. We want your help, and there's plenty of space on these sign up sheets. Um, next Sunday after church, 2 p.m., parking lot, blessing of the animals. You get to bring your dog, your cat in a cage, um, bird whatever cool animal you want to bring. Come over here. It's about a 15-minute service, but it is the most photogenic service of the whole year. So I encourage you to come bring uh, your animals. And invite a friend. That's a great thing to invite, invite a friend to, uh, another pet-loving friend that you have. Because uh, we have recently lost our friend Sally Abjian, um, after years and years of ministry to this church, she passed away um, about 10 days ago. Uh, Sally did the greeting card ministry at Aldersgate. She uh, had the birthday list, and she would send out those cards. So many of us in this room received cards from Sally over the years. There is an opportunity for someone who wants to serve the church in this way uh, to send out those birthday cards to the church community during the year. So if you are interested, please come and talk to me, because I would love to see that ministry continue. Final announcement, two final announcements. Uh, this afternoon up in North Andover, the Rolling Ridge Retreating Conference Center, celebrating the 70th anniversary. This is a free event, an open house. Bonnie Spicer will be speaking. I will be speaking. Holly Lynch is on the board. David Granger from Northern Maine, Downey's Maine Missions, is going to be there. Um, if you have the time, come on up. The program is officially at 4.30, but it's open house from 2.30. And then with dinner, free. It's wonderful. And if you didn't want dinner there, come to my house for dinner at 6 o'clock and bring your friend for dinner service. Okay, you got that all. <laughs> Birthday cake, two minute rule, sign up sheets, everything. It's gotta be great. <laughs> Please stand for the best. No, no, celebration and thanks. Who's got one? We like to celebrate and thank the volunteers who are working around this church all the time. I have one I have to read, Bobby, go ahead. And what would you say? Everybody that has stepped up within the last two weeks to help change this sanctuary around into a cheerleading space in order to help the church grow. Yeah, so everyone moves the benches so that this can be a cheerleading rehearsal space. Let's give them a hand. It is really something to see kids tumbling across this floor. I am working to pull up a text for you. My phone, see my phone is just a rather, I don't know, hang up, right here. Because we need to celebrate and thank the Lynch and Giles families. Holly sent me a text this morning. I, you know, I should have pulled it up before. She said, I just want you to know, in case things seem crazy between our two families, how 
I'm leaving softball practice early with my daughter to get here for the 9.30 meeting. Our friends are picking up kids at track, bringing them here. Then we're going from hockey practice to there. And we will all be at the church conference after worship. And it was like moving the sun, moon, and stars. And I appreciated them putting priority on being here when there's so many things competing for our time. So let's recognize the Giles and Lynch family. Okay, please stand for the benediction. <laughs> Lord God, you who are the God who goes back through our past and redeems those things, gleans and cleans, Lord, so that we can go forward into the future as redeemed and blessed people. May you be with us until we meet again in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.